Okay. Uh, uh, this is going to be the advocacy section of the discussion. And um, unfortunately, we, uh, we don't have Esther Busher here, but she did send a message. And the agenda that we're going to be looking at is two main principal points. Um, the one is uh, on LPG for the energy transition, which is a study um, that we just completed. And it's also a campaign which is being run and Tamsin is going to lead us through that. And then we're going to talk uh, about our LPG advocacy, which is one of the major planks of the work that we're doing this year. But first, let me uh, give you a message uh, from Esther Busher, who's currently in Bangladesh or on her way back from Bangladesh. And she sent this message for the group and hopefully it's going to work. No sound, Michael. No sound, okay. Well. Let's try it again. You hear it? Is there sound, Jay? No sound. We're just going to. Sorry about that. We're just going to have to skip ahead. We uh, we tried this uh, earlier and it, and it worked out. Um, I'm not sure why the technology didn't agree with us this time, but let me just tell you, it was a very inspiring message from Esther and uh, she encouraged you all to support the work that WPGA is doing in the advocacy section uh, and also to make sure that you make plans to join us in Rome for LPG week um, that we're holding along with Liquid Gas Europe. It's going to be a very, very big event. Uh, with this, I'm going to turn over to Tamsin, uh, and I'm going to ask Tamsin to lead us through the discussion on the energy transition campaign. So Tamsin, floor is yours. Thank you, Michael, and uh, yeah, thanks uh, for the introduction. As mentioned, I have the pleasure of taking us through the energy transition campaign today. Uh, so next slide, please. So wherever you are in the world and whichever stage of development your market is in, LPG can help you realize and reach your decarbonization targets. So whether you're moving or transitioning from biomass to LPG for cooking, you're decarbonizing. If you're replacing higher carbon fuels with LPG for various applications, you're decarbonizing. If you're combining LPG with renewables in a hybrid system, you're decarbonizing. And if you're moving from conventional LPG to renewable LPG, you're decarbonizing. So access to clean, affordable, renewable energy like LPG ensures equity on the pathway to zero emissions. Just gonna mute you there, Michael. Uh, so in the next slide, uh, so no matter which phase of the energy transition you're within, LPG has and is playing an important decarbonization role. And this is detailed in our latest report, LPG's role in the energy transition. And I'm sure uh, Audrey is going to be sharing a link in the chat where you can access this report. Uh, and the report examines the role of LPG in the energy transition over four sections, and it utilizes the World Energy Council's energy trilemma, which highlights sustainability, energy equity, and energy security as three core aspects in the energy transition. It also details and highlights the UN's SDGs, which can be addressed through a transition to LPG. So in the next slide, uh, you'll see that the uh, launch of the report is supported with a three week uh, com communications campaign. And this kicked off a week ago, so it's going to be running through to the end of the month. Um, and it's supported with a new charter of benefits, which is also available on our website, which takes all of this information from uh, the study and it puts it into easily digestible infographics. And the uh, campaign is also supported on all our digital channels. So it's across our website, it's on our social media channels, supported with the paid promotion on LinkedIn and Twitter. So uh, we also will be having a LPG Talks live webinar, which will be hosted uh, with ANOVA next week on Tuesday. So we invite you to attend. 
On the next slide, you'll see the campaign has been performing well. Uh, so we have achieved over 255,000 impressions so far from week one uh, with 1,300 engagements and 970 clicks through to the website. And obviously this is growing as the paid promotion continues. So we invite you to download that report, use it as an advocacy tool, utilize all of our materials from the campaign. As I mentioned, we also have a new chart of benefits and please do sign up for LPG Talks Live. Uh, next week, Tuesday, we're gonna be hearing from some industry experts on exactly uh, this whole campaign on LPG's role in the energy transition. So uh, we look forward to seeing you there. And if you have any queries, please do reach out to Michael or myself for further information. Thanks, Michael. Handing back to you. All right, thank you. So yeah, keep get that into your calendars. That's Tuesday, the 27th of June uh, next week, when we'll be talking about um, the role of LPG in the energy transition. And as uh, Tamsin said, this applies uh, no matter what level of development the market that you're operating in finds itself, whether you're very nascent uh, or very mature, um, LPG can provide a pathway for uh, um, decarbonization and to help you achieve your goals under the uh, Paris Agreement from COP21. We're going to switch our, uh, our, our attention here to a discussion of the renewable liquid gas campaign. And you notice here we're talking very specifically about renewable liquid gas. And this is a discussion that we're going to have about how we change the way we position uh, LPG and what we call ourselves from renewable LPG to renewable liquid gas. This is in um, progress. And it's part of the work that we'll be doing uh, as uh, uh, part of the advocacy work under WPGA. Uh, we are, are working with FTI um, consultants, and uh, they have a lot of experience working with uh, the fossil fuel industry, and they're helping us put together this campaign. And you can see here uh, what the planning is um, and how we intend to execute this. Uh, there are going to be three total burst campaigns. The first you can see here on this slide will run from the 26th of June to the 7th of July. The second one will run later in the year uh, in the run up to LPG week. And the, the last one will run up, will uh, run in the, the run up to COP28, which will take place in Dubai this year. That's the big annual uh, United Nations negotiations on climate change. And you can see the different elements of this campaign that we're working on. Our objectives uh, uh, are to raise general awareness the benefits of renewable liquid gas or just of the existence of renewable liquid gas. We often find that we uh, get forgotten much of the time. Uh, we want to ensure that we position WPGA as an expert source on this issue uh, and to ensure that whenever your stakeholders, our stakeholders are looking for uh, expert opinions or data, they know that they can turn to uh, the WPGA as a, a credible source of information on all the different elements that go into renewable liquid gas. And then obviously something which is always a uh, objective of WPGAs is to keep our members informed of what's taking place in the industry. And that's extremely important for us so that our industry as a whole understands what's happening um, in this space and what the potential long-term impacts are to our members and to the industry, um, no matter where you are and no matter, no matter what kind of industry you're operating in. The audience for this, the various different stakeholders, um, are obviously policymakers uh, and regulators, and that's national or regional if you have an intragovernmental body such as the European Union. Um, we also deal with multilateral institutions. It's kind of uh, uh, WPGA's uh, bread and butter. So the big uh, organizations like the United Nations and the World Bank, et cetera, et cetera. Media and opinion are perennial um, stakeholders of ours. Uh, how do we how do we interact with those? How do we shape and craft their opinion, or help them to shape and craft their opinion? And then our members, uh, you, again, going back to this education piece to inform you of what's happening uh, um, in this space. And then obviously uh, engaged public. So uh, what the wider industry is, um, adjacent industries, uh, research institutions, academic institutions, and energy think tanks. So these are the kind of organizations and stakeholders that we plan to influence um, and to impact with these discussions. Our pillars and key messages, and these are distilled down to three very simple points, which are extremely important. 
that uh, renewable liquid gas is available, uh, becoming more available, or more of it is becoming available. And it does provide a drop in solution to help um, uh, tackle issues around climate change and decarbonization. Uh, it's an effective solution for hard to abate sectors and markets. So rural areas, areas that don't have necessarily access to grid energy. And uh, maybe the most important of these is it's, it's very fast developing. So I always say that this is a fast moving space. Things are happening very, very quickly. Nikos gave you an, a, a very detailed overview of the investment and, and uh, the different elements that are going into this discussion at the moment. So this is something for us uh, to ensure that we communicate this to our stakeholders, that there is a lot of innovation, a lot of investment, a lot of resources are going into this segment of our industry. And we explore these key messages in, uh, in the comms toolkit, which we'll talk about later. So this the purpose is to educate um, all of our stakeholders on the benefits of renewable liquid gas all the way down to end users to amplify the facts, the data, our messages, talking points uh, around this issue, and then to try and influence um, uh, the key stakeholders and decision makers uh, so that they understand not only what renewable liquid gas is, but what they can do to incentivize the growth of renewable liquid gas or to ensure that it grows in a safe and sustainable way and then maybe get access to it and, uh, and, uh, and influence its introduction into their marketplaces. For the three burst campaigns, we are going to be primarily using Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. And you can see the different countries that we're uh, targeting there. We had discussed targeting Japan, where there's a lot of work going in this, but we found that the English language engagement uh, is not very high. Um, we think that's a market that we'll be targeting in the future. Uh, I should point out that this we're thinking of this as a multi-year campaign. What you're seeing now is the outline for 2023, uh, but we'll have a reevaluation at the end of the year. Uh, and then draft an action plan for 2024 and then beyond into 2025. We want to try and form a long-term relationship with FTI uh, so that they can help us in uh, this promotion and, and uh, positioning of renewable liquid gas uh, to these various different stakeholders. Uh, the communications toolkit, which will be made available to our members. Um, you can see the goals there to inform, to educate, to guide. Uh, and it'll include all the elements that you see up on screen here. And this is to help our uh, members uh, with their own communications, their own outreach to their stakeholders, and provide some consistency and some coherence to the talking points and the message. As a very fragmented industry, this is something that we've struggled with traditionally to ensure that our industry speaks with one voice. Uh, and we're trying to uh, make sure that, particularly on this issue, which is a new issue, a new segment for our industry, that we do provide the kind of guidance uh, and communications tools that allow our members to uh, communicate in a coherent way on all the various different platforms that they use, no matter uh, what markets they're in, no matter what region of the world they're in. So a lot of this stuff is still being developed, and once it is developed, it'll be funneled into this communications toolkit, which will be made available to all of you to use in your communications. If you have questions about this, please feel free to contact myself or Tamsin, and we can provide you guidance on what the ETA is for this, what the deadlines are, uh, and which will what would the sequencing will be. So it'll be the first elements of the communications toolkit that will become available. Beyond that, we have some additional ideas for new collateral. Uh, and some of this will come out in 2023. Some of this will be developed uh, in the longer term, um, but you can see them listed there. We think that some of this collateral uh, will happen organically. As we get more experience with this space, we'll figure out that there are certain things that we need in order to communicate effectively uh, about renewable liquid gas. So um, these are just our, our initial ideas. Um, it's, it's almost guaranteed that some things that we're not thinking about will become incredibly important. It'll become obvious that they're important on how we communicate. We will develop collateral to communicate on those, uh, on those issues or to address those challenges uh, as they come up. Uh, if you have ideas about uh, any additional collateral that you think would be effective, for us, please let us know uh, and we'll be happy to take a look at it and see if we can incorporate it into the pipeline of additional collateral that we have for the future. And that's where we are. So it's short and sweet. Um, 
highlighting not only the role of LPG in uh, the energy transition, but also talking about the work that WPGA is doing as an institution to promote renewable liquid gas. Um, I should also highlight that uh, in terms of advocacy, WPGA is involved in a lot of different areas. Um, we just decided to highlight these two projects because they seem to be the most topical. But we continue our work uh, on SDG 5, which is the sustainable development goal that focuses on gender issues, on climate change and preparations for the COP28 meetings in Dubai, which I talked about at the top of this discussion, on Cooking for Life, our flagship program uh, on substitution of biomass for LPG. So we are uh, we have a lot of irons in the fire. Um, and if you have any questions about any of those projects that we didn't discuss today, please feel free to contact either myself or Tamsin, and we'll be happy to update you on where we are.